Everyone and their mothers always have something to say on how to create a good resume. You should consider all of them, but do what makes most sense to you. In this video, I'll share with you my engineering resumes all the way from the end of high school through university and to the current resume that got me my current job as a mechanical design engineer at a robotics tech startup. But real quick before getting into my resumes, keep in mind there are really only four sections that you need in an engineering resume. Skills, experience, projects, and education. That being said, let's look at the first phase of my resume. This is one I made in high school and one I had going into university. This resume was three pages long and honestly, I don't even know why I made it this long. It's not like I had any relevant engineering experience back when I was making it. But first thing I have is my career objective, which is honestly kinda useless. Most of my skills here are useless too. Having these first three bullet points aren't really helpful when applying for a technical role. Mentioning GD&T, SOLIDWORKS, AutoCAD, and C++ is good though. Also mentioning the fact that I'm fluent in Arabic or basic French isn't needed unless I was applying to a job in an Arabic or a French speaking country. The only language that I think is worth mentioning on an engineering resume is Mandarin just because we work a lot with Chinese suppliers and knowing that language can be kind of helpful and can kind of make you stand out. Moving on, I have this extracurricular section where I talk about relevant stuff that I did in high school. At the time, adding high school stuff was okay, but ideally you want to get some real experience and get rid of it as soon as possible. Next, the project section is actually pretty good because this is the only relevant experience that I actually have. The only issue I have with it is that my bullet points are so vague. I need to talk more about what tools I use like SOLIDWORKS, to CAD, or Python to code because that's what employers actually care about. For example, here where I talk about what Waterloo Formula Electric does is not very helpful. Instead, I should specifically talk about what I did, how I did it, and the final results. Now, the professional and volunteer experiences are nice, but not really needed. Achievements are also useless unless I've accomplished something truly profound like, I don't know, being the first human on Mars, for example. Next, putting my university experience is important, but my high school education is honestly useless. If I'm in university, then it's kind of obvious that I've attended high school already. Moving on, these interests aren't very useful because they're honestly very generic, and I really don't need to say references available upon request. Overall, this resume is trash. It's three pages long, but most of the content there is useless, and there is a lot of empty white space. Luckily, I didn't apply anywhere with this resume. I had a few upper year students and a professor look at this resume and thankfully they gave me some good feedback which I used to create this next resume. This is phase 2 of my resume progression and it's already so much better than the first one because it's just one page and I don't have excessive white space. I chose to go with two columns here because at the time an upper year student told me that two column resumes are the move. It's what was trending at the time. My naive self was like alright say less but realistically as long as it's readable it really doesn't matter. Moving on my summary is a bit better here but I don't need these last two bullet points. The work part of my skills section is good but again the personal and language sections are useless. At the time I had absolutely no experience so I did the best I can with what I had. But one thing I could have done to make it better is talk a lot more about Waterloo Formula Electric and my experience there. Like 5 technical points about the project details would have gone a long way back then. The project section is pretty good but I definitely should have made it in bullet point format so the resume style is kind of consistent throughout. But awards and interests are honestly useless. I mean why the heck did I put puzzles as one of my interests? That's an L right there. I used this resume to apply to jobs and it somehow convinced someone to hire me. This was my first internship and I worked at a startup called Brilli as a junior software development engineer for 5 weeks in the months of May and June 2017. During my 5 weeks there, I got paid a total of $1000 which is hella low. This startup was also really small and when I say small, I'm talking like 5 employees max including myself. I then took that experience and added it to my resume to create phase 3 which is honestly pretty similar to phase 2. My bullet points for my work at Brilli aren't bad but I just didn't enjoy coding. However, this resume helped me get a job at two really small startups. One is for 5 weeks during the months of June and July 2017 called Helpware. Then the second startup one was also for 5 weeks during the months of July and August 2017 called Rise. 
So that summer I made a total of $3,000 over that four month time period, which is honestly really low, but it taught me two things. It taught me how to live really frugally, and it gave me a lot of experience that I can now put on my resume to help me get my next internship. This led to phase four, which was very similar to phase three in terms of its layout, but I now had a lot more relevant experience and I could start getting rid of my high school experience. The summary skills and education sections are good for the most part, but what the heck is leadership? Useless and useless. I don't understand why I decided to make this table for my project section. I should always keep my resume format consistent. So I had good points, but they should have been bullet points instead. The best part about working at three different startups in four months is at first glance, it makes it seem like I have more experience than I actually do. But for the love of God, my experience working for my student design team was actually pretty good, but I didn't talk about it in a lot of detail. I mean, this is just so vague. Anyways, the sad part about this resume is it got me like zero interviews, so I had to make a change. I talked to an upper year student and he told me that the two column resume trend is now dead and I should switch back to a single column resume. At the time, I'm like, okay, I don't know who decides these things, but I figured I had nothing to lose, so I did that, which led me to phase five of my resume. Phase five actually looks a lot cleaner than phase four and I finally decided to add more information about my time working at Waterloo Formula Electric, so round of applause for 2017 Tamer. I think this is the phase where my resume actually started to look like a proper engineering resume. For example, where I say used SOLIDWORKS to create 3D models of small mechanisms, sheet metal parts, and welded constructions, such as aluminum test jig used to assess the efficiency of solar panels, improving production cost and quality, that's actually pretty good. The how, what, and why is explained very clearly in that bullet point, so good job again 2017 Tamer. Also, that right here is a weird flex, but okay. This resume got me my first real paid engineering internship. I worked at Ecobee as a manufacturing engineering intern, and if you're curious, they paid me 24 Canadian dollars an hour. Funny thing was after this internship, I actually started to doubt whether I even enjoy engineering and whether I wanna continue pursuing this major. I even debated dropping out. But luckily I pulled through and now I have a YouTube channel that's centered around engineering, so really the tables have turned. That being said, one thing I could have improved on in phase five of my resume was that I could have added a portfolio. So 2017 Tamer was lacking on that. After this resume came phase six, it was very similar to phase five with the addition of my Ecobee experience. I applied to a lot of jobs with this resume, but I didn't have a lot of luck with it. Maybe because I was starting to be a little bit more picky with the kind of jobs that I was looking for, which I really shouldn't have been because I was applying with no portfolio, so I had no reason to be picky with any of the jobs I was applying to. Luckily, after a little over two years of engineering school, I finally realized that I should really add a portfolio, which led me to phase seven. Two big changes happened here was first, I added a portfolio to my resume, and I decided to change the layout of my resume once again. Honestly, the new layout didn't really matter, but good job to 2019 Tamer for again, finally, finally adding a portfolio. Also, I know at the time I thought the layout was good, but these logos are so unsymmetrical and kind of useless. Also, these blue boxes around my skills aren't symmetrical either. Some words are off-centered, which just looks so unprofessional. I hate to admit it, but this layout kind of proves the stereotype that engineers lack a sense of style. Anyways, taking a closer look at my portfolio, it's honestly not that bad, but I should really break up these paragraphs into short and simple bullet points. And honestly, the design of it is kind of ugly. But although it was ugly, it got me an internship at a startup called Valideer in the summer of 2019. This was my first design engineering role and it really got me to fall in love with mechanical design again and I was able to realize that I honestly see myself working for a tech startup over a large company. I then added that experience to phase eight of my resume and it has a completely new layout which I think actually looks pretty good. It has a little bit of color, just enough to make it pop but not too much that it's completely distracting or unprofessional like this, for example. All the previous phases of my resume used Microsoft Word to design and create it, but this was the first one where I decided to use Canva to make my resume. This is the layout that I still use to this day, and I'll add a template for it in the video description if you're interested. If you decide to use my resume or portfolio template for your resume and portfolio, 
feel free to email it to me at this email right here just because I'd love to see what your resumes and portfolios look like and how much you're applying the tips that I'm giving in this video. But let's just take a minute to appreciate how much progress my portfolio has done. This was my winter 2019 design versus my fall 2019 design. Anyways, this led me to getting my first engineering internship in the Bay Area. I worked for a startup called Blended from January to April 2020. I then added that experience to stage 9 of my resume, so my resume did change a little bit but my portfolio stayed the same for the most part. Mainly because I wasn't allowed to talk about the work I did at Blended because that startup was pretty secretive. A lot of companies in the Bay Area are actually like this, so to make up for it I worked on a personal project with a few friends called Happy and added that experience to my portfolio in this phase. Now comparing phase 8 and phase 9, you'll notice I removed my helper experience from phase 8 to make room for my blended experience in phase 9. As you progress through your engineering studies and get more experience, that's a common thing that you're going to have to do. You'd rather remove your really old experiences than forcing your resume to be over a page long. This resume got me my contract role at Tesla in the summer of 2021. This led to phase 10 of my resume. Again, the portfolio in this phase is pretty similar to the previous phases. There's so much I'd love to share on my portfolio from my time at Tesla, but they're so secretive. Like, I wasn't even allowed to take pictures of the stuff that I was working on, and I even had to be very, very vague with the bullet points that I put for my Tesla experience on my resume. So for that reason, my portfolio basically stayed the same from phase nine and phase 10, but overall, I think I did a pretty good job here with all my bullet points. That's because, again, I very clearly mentioned what and how I did, as well as the final results of my projects. This was the resume that got me my current full-time job at Serve Robotics. As a matter of fact, when I was applying to a bunch of full-time jobs with this resume, I got a lot of compliments from hiring managers and recruiters complimenting the design and style of it. Anyways, this was my latest phase of my engineering resumes, so comparing phase 1 and phase 10, you see a massive difference. With every phase in my resume, I made small changes, but over time they compound to give you something that actually works. After seeing 5 years worth of engineering resume in 10 phases, I threw a lot of information at you, so here are a few things to keep in mind. First, sometimes things don't work out and you don't know why. For example, a resume that could be doing really really well one year, randomly just stops giving you interviews the next year. So you just gotta adapt and be relentless until you get something that actually works once more. Second, you may have seen these creative resumes that go viral on LinkedIn. If you choose to go that route, it may or may not work. It really depends on the company because although it can go viral on social media, I don't know how helpful it will be in getting you the job that you want. Finally, when you and your fellow classmates and friends are working on your engineering resumes and portfolios, I'd recommend you work with each other and share your stuff with each other. One of your friends can have a really good bullet point on their resume that seems to be getting them a lot of interviews, so they can share it with you and then you can use it as well, as long as you actually have a decent amount of experience to support that bullet point though. But honestly, there is no point of being super, super secretive over your resume, because trust me when I tell you this, there is enough jobs to go around for everyone. Work together, help each other, don't be extremely unnecessarily competitive, and don't be snakes to one another. That's just my two cents. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, check out this video where I share with you my engineering resume that got me a job at Tesla in a lot more detail, or check out that video where I share with you what my experience is like working at a tech startup. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!